when they catch you. What will you do if they break you? Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. My name's Jack and today is another LEGO Weekly News update. That clip you saw right there is a small portion of what is the full version of a LEGO Star Wars Rogue One trailer. It's really cool, it's definitely worth checking out the full version. I will leave a link in the video description below. And I will leave a link to the Animators Collective, the guys that actually made the trailer. They're a very talented group of animators that not only create very high quality and very entertaining bits of LEGO animation, but they've also got behind the scenes stuff and they show off all the video effects that go into a production like this and it is quite a lot so if any of that stuff interests you or if you are even an aspiring animator they're definitely going to be a very good resource for you and they're worth checking out in the video description below once again I will leave links in the video description below for the Lego Rogue One trailer and the animators collective but don't click away just yet there's still plenty of Lego news that happened this week and the next bit is still Lego Star Wars news and this is about the new video game this is the Lego Star Wars Force Awakens video game and on May the 4th they released a new trailer the game will be featuring six adventures. They include Rathtar hunting, Lor Santeca's return, one is Poe's rescue where you have to rescue Admiral Akbar. there's another one called Crimson Corsair, Trouble Over Tall, and Otagon Assault. These adventures introduce some new characters, or at least expand the backstory on some characters that seem to be very small in The Force Awakens, and I have a feeling this is going to be a very good Star Wars game. I'm not sure when the official release date is, but this is available for pre-order. Now normally I'd be getting into the official images that were released this week, but I really want to get onto LEGO Ideas now. LEGO Ideas, if you don't know what it is, is a website where you can submit your own LEGO creation in hopes to having it become an official LEGO set. This week, two new sets got 10,000 votes, which means they're now gonna be put into the review stage, and here they are. This first one here I am very excited for. We have the Spaceballs Eagle 5, and it's a pretty nice build. For those younger viewers that might not know what this is, I mean, it looks like a flying Winnebago, but it is the Good Guys Millennium Falcon equivalent of the Mel Brooks movie Spaceballs. Sorry for the low quality clip right there. And in case you don't know or don't remember what that bumper sticker says on the back, it says I Heart Uranus. And surprisingly, it doesn't look like the builder put a bumper sticker piece on the back of his Eagle 5. Realistically, if this set does get accepted, they're definitely gonna have to create a Lone Star and Barf minifig. And it might be great if we also got Princess Vespa and Dot Matrix. If nothing else, Lego already made a minifig for Dark Helmet. Sometimes idea sets don't get accepted due to licensing issues, but I have a feeling Mel Brooks probably won't mind the making of an Eagle 5. Merchandising! Space Falls the t-shirt! Space Falls the coloring book! Space Falls the lunchbox! Space Falls the breakfast cereal! Space Falls the flamethrower! All right, sorry, I'm having too much fun with this. The second idea set that was accepted this week was Voltron. And at first I thought this robot was based on Power Rangers, but when looking into it further, I realized it is based on an anime that was released in the mid 80s that I guess Power Rangers is now based on. It's definitely a good looking build. All the animal robots fold together to create the body of Voltron Defender of the Universe. And it looks pretty good. I have a feeling it's a giant build. And these last several weeks, LEGO has been slowly trickling out official LEGO images for the summer, and this week we have everything new from Bionicle. Or almost everything new. I'm pretty sure there's one Bionicle set that we don't have official images for yet. These images came from the brickset.com. But anyways, here's the first one, and this is Akimu the Mask Maker 71312. We've got a really good looking trans blue and gold color combo, and I particularly like the build for his crystal hammer. Definitely a cool piece to use at the front of a hammer. Our next one is Lava Beast 71313, and according to the description of this guy, those giant fiery crystal-like structures on his arms are supposed to be wings but I have a feeling they'd be a lot more fun as scissor-like weapons. Here's our next guy, Storm Beast 71314. And honestly, I'm having a little trouble making out the dimensions of this guy. It says that he's got a battle tail for swiping enemies off their feet, but it seems the tail is also connected to one of his arms. And I don't know, I guess I'm just a little bit confused. I do like the shape of the head though. Our next guy is Umarok the Destroyer 71316. And I think this guy is just my favorite. He's got big claw hands, some giant horns, a very savage looking face, and basically just a good shape for the body. So that's it for the official images that were released this week. I know there's a couple other Bionicle sets that we don't have images for yet, but they'll probably trickle out in the next week or two. There's a couple other things left to finish off before we get to custom creations, and this first one is a rumor. 
on the Eurobricks forum, cm 4 Psy has reported that Sonic will probably be in the next wave for Dimensions. Remember, this is just a rumor and not confirmed, but if it does turn out to be true, Sega fans will probably be pretty happy. Building instructions for the Olympics and Paralympics mascots are now available. This is Vinicius and Tom. The official sets of these guys might only be regionally available in Brazil. And our last bit of news is for the LEGO Avengers video game, and that is DLC for the Black Panther is now available. All right, that's it for news. Let's move on to the custom creation segment. This is basically where I get to talk about some of the coolest LEGO creations I happen to see throughout the week. This first one here I think is called the Buccaneer's Dread by Robert Garmadon. Using the dinghy piece that usually only holds about two minifigs, the builder has managed to create a full-size pirate ship, and because the build style is so good, it definitely makes this thing look a lot bigger than it actually is. Not only does this build exhibit some clever building, but we've also got a lot of good string work here, as well as some very talented sail folding. Not such a commonly exhibited skill amongst expert builders, but I think you'll agree when I say that it definitely makes it for the look of this ship. Our next build is very different. This is the Moise Isley Spaceport by Ice Cream Clone. It's a huge build that has a much larger Moise Isley Cantina and also a lot of other structures within the spaceport. I really like the structures of these buildings. They somewhat remind me of mosques and there's just some really nice details spread all around. Here is an M1A3 Abrams by Andrew Somers, and I think anyone will agree that this thing looks really, really good. I actually met Andrew a couple months back, and we were gonna build one of his Abrams tanks. So if you're watching this, Andrew, we'll get around to building that Abrams, but at the moment we're crazy busy, and we're gonna have to settle with appreciating the Abrams in picture form for now. It's an awesome build though, and we're really looking forward to see what comes out next. This one here is called Roxanne by Anton Sudstrom. And what I appreciate about this build and this builder is that he manages to get a lot of character into his characters. Not only is Roxanne highly poseable, but the name might also act as a little bit of a pun. Usually Lego built figures of this size are almost always some sort of robot, mech, or Gundam. And it's nice to see how much personality a builder can flesh out of a character of this size. Definitely worth checking out this builder's flicker stream of all of his other characters. Not only have we moved back down in build size here, but I think we've also taken a small trip in a time machine. This is my old desktop, Byte Edition by Chris McVeigh. It's a great build style that showcases a lot of little details. And this work desk somewhat reminds me of my dad's work desk from the mid 90s to early 2000s. There's lots of clever little details here, and I think I like the stapler the best, but I also think this photograph was taken in a very clever way. The floor could be the lining of a chair possibly, and that wall wood grain reminds me of a laminated desktop. It not only adds to the color combo, but really adds to the era that this build is supposed to take place in. And this last one here is Ray's Blaster by LEGO Admiral. And maybe I like this weapon because it's built so well, or maybe it's because I just watched the Star Wars Force Awakens again last night and was admiring just how cool Ray's Blaster is, but I think it's a combination of both. I have a feeling the builder used a lot of screenshots when making this, and something tells me that they've managed to get this blaster to perfect or nearly perfect scale. This blaster looks great, and I never imagined that its shape would lend so well into LEGO. Alright, so that's it for this LEGO Weekly News update. Remember to check out the links in the video description below, especially that LEGO Star Wars Rogue One trailer. It's really, really cool and it's definitely worth checking out. Other than that, we are done here, so thanks a lot for watching, and if you enjoy our content, feel free to subscribe, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.